Golden What? The golden ratio, symbol is the Greek letter phi, is a special number which is equal to about 1.618033987. There are many different names for the golden ratio. The golden mean, phi, the divine section, the golden cut, the golden proportion, and the divine proportion. It appears many times in geometry, art, architecture, and other areas. How do we solve for the golden ratio? We find the golden ratio when we divide a line into two parts so that first, the longer part divided by the smaller part is also equal to the whole length divided by the longer part. How did this start? It appears that the Egyptians may have used both pi and phi in the design of the Great Pyramids. The Greeks are thought by some to have based the design of the Parthenon on this proportion, but this is subject to some conjecture. Phidias, a Greek sculptor and mathematician, studied phi and applied it to the design of the sculptures for the Parthenon. Plato, in his views on natural science and cosmology presented in his Timaeus, considered the golden section to be the most binding of all mathematical relationships and the key to the physics of the cosmos. Euclid, in Elements, referred to dividing a line at the 0.618399 point as dividing a line in the extreme and mean ratio. This later gave rise to the use of the term mean in the golden mean. He also linked this number to the construction of a pentagram. Too much for the technical things. Now, how could we appreciate this so-called golden ratio? Did you know that you encounter this in your everyday life? An example of this is a sunflower. Spiral leaf growth. Here is an example of a daisy with 21 petals. But we don't see this in all plants, as nature has many different methods of survival. As it first started in architecture, phi, the golden ratio, has been used by mankind for centuries in architecture. Its use started as perhaps early as with the Egyptians in the design of the pyramids. The Parthenon The Parthenon built in 447 to 438 BC, appears to use it in some aspects of its design to achieve beauty and balance its design. Notre Dame Notre Dame in Paris, which was built in between 1163 and 1250, appears to have golden ratio proportions in a number of its key proportions of design. Although it is rather asymmetrical, in its design and difficult to measure photographically because of parallax distortions, the golden ratio lines of the green, blue, and red rectangles conform closely to the major architectural lines. The Taj Mahal, Renaissance artist of the 1500s in the time of Leonardo da Vinci, knew it as the divine proportion. In India, it was used in the construction of the Taj Mahal which was completed in 1648. Le Corbusier, the Swiss architect, Le Corbusier, famous for his contributions to the modern international style, centered his design philosophy on systems of harmony and proportion. Le Corbusier's faith in the mathematical order of the universe was closely bound to the Golden Ratio and the Fibonacci series. Palladio's Villa Rotonda. The Villa Rotonda is symmetrical on all axes, including diagonals. Any architect will tell you this is hard to do, much less sell to a client. Even Palladio only did it once, probably just to see if he could. Palladio's base on his design on simple progressions in the Fibonacci series leading to the golden mean. This is also hard to do. A geometrical analysis of the Great Mosque of Cairo 1 reveals a consistent application of the golden ratio throughout the design. In the modern day, architectures take advantage 
of Golden Asia in their work. First, the United Nations Current Headquarters. The current headquarters of the United Nations was constructed on an 18-acre piece of land in the east side of Manhattan. When looking closely at the building, we observe that many of the windows in fact have the golden ratio when comparing their width and height. The more obvious application of the United Nations headquarters to the golden ratio is found when looking at the width of the entire building and comparing it to the height of every 10 floors. When you really think about it, one of the coolest facets of architecture is the ability to have buildings be so different, so varied in terms of size, shape, and style, and yet so similar at their core. No matter what the building's eventual purpose is, the golden ratio was most likely used to determine its proportions. How could the golden ratio help in architecture? First, it brings balance and height. As a general rule, we gravitate toward buildings that appear balanced. Though modern marvels of construction may be fun to look at, we tend to write them off for day-to-day -day use because the space is perceived as less functional than their more conventionally structured counterparts. One of the simplest ways to import a sense of balance to a structure is to base it off the principles of the golden rectangle. It allows for varying shapes. Of course, not all buildings are going to be perfectly rectangular. Whether the natural landscape, existing lot boundaries, or personal style dictates that the structure take on a different formation, architects need to be a way to accommodate an array of shapes. Luckily, with just a few extra amendments to the golden rectangle, architects can easily apply the ratio to any shape that they can dream of. Third, it makes buildings aesthetically pleasing. Architecture isn't just about form and function. It is also about physical appearance. Just as the design elements you include in your interior design set a tone for the rooms within your home, the way that a building looks has an impact on its surrounding area. Add to that the personal satisfaction that an architect must feel when their work is well received and it's no surprise that the ratio plays a role. So after all those discussions, the golden ratio's applications stretch far and wide. It's found in nature, incorporated into great artworks, and even used in marketing campaigns to influence our buying choices. It's no surprise that architects also jump at the chance to subconsciously influence our opinions of their work. They use it to give buildings balance and height, create obscure shapes, and design beautiful layouts. Take a look at the buildings in your hometown. You'll undoubtedly be able to pick out a few examples of your own.